Well, welcome back to the Aviation Business Podcast, and where we're going to talk about a topic that's kind of been near and dear to my heart lately, as I work with a lot of business owners in my business and and just with other colleagues uh, through the CBMC, I just see some recurring issues that come up time and again, and uh, really, uh, you know, the causes are similar in a lot of ways, uh, but the solution uh, to a lot of business owners or team leaders is is creating some clarity. And so there's a tool I want to talk about uh, today that will kind of get to the heart of that, about creating clarity and having, uh, you know, systems and processes in place uh, with intention that'll help your business or team succeed. And we're all familiar with what an operating system is. Pretty much everyone's used uh, a computer or a phone device and are familiar with an operating system. So if Mac operating system or the you know, the, um, uh, you know, the iPhone operating system, Windows and its operating systems. But uh, the definition of an operating system is it's the software that supports the computer's basic functions, such as scheduling tasks, ex- executing applications and controlling peripherals, right? So it's the code, the DNA of, of the uh, running the device. It's the processes and systems that help the device work properly. And over the last few years of this podcast, we spent a lot of time discussing the importance of purpose, vision, values, establishing goals, having proper appropriate review and execution. And, and we've talked about those things all separately. Uh, but it, ultimately, it's about having a plan and a process to establish, review and grow, right, an operating system. Uh, through these items that most businesses need to succeed in the long term. So, so what I've discovered in working with a lot of these business owners is that most don't have a complete, a routinized system uh, for clarifying, understanding, and running their business to its full potential. They either lack uh, clarity of purpose, vision, values, uh, mission, or they may not know how to set uh, or you know, execute or follow up on goals either for themselves or if they can for themselves, perhaps their team members. Perhaps they you know they do some of these things, but not consistently. Uh, again, maybe for them, but not their team. They don't know how to get everyone else on board. And ultimately, this is where an organizational operating system comes into play. And I'm just going to skim the surface on this subject today to hopefully whet your appetite to dig into an organizational operating system and creating this clarity and this, these processes in your team, in your organization that will help it uh, achieve its fullest potentials. Uh, the two books that I'm going to recommend to you are Traction by Gina Wickman and uh, a similar book in which preceded it was Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. And they both really dig into these details. But Traction talks about having an EOS, an entrepreneurial operating a system. According to Traction, an EOS is a proven set of simple practical tools that synchronizes how people in an organization meet, solve problems, plan and prioritize, follow up processes, communicate measure, structure, clarify roles, lead and manage. So again, there's a lot to this. So I just want to whet that appetite, encourage you guys to get this book. If you don't have certain elements of these, or if you think you're, you have your own version, uh, you know, I found that uh, going through this process and, and, and bringing all of these different elements that I've talked about before into one uh, clear and concise area with a clear and concise process and system has uh, paid benefits for, for my organization and for others that have done it, I've heard the same thing. So again, Traction by Gina Wickman or Scaling Up by Vern Harnish. And there's there are consultants and a host of people who have, uh, you know, help companies do this or, or something very similar. But here's some, some key elements, you know, so first, no company can understand where it's going without understanding who it is. So uh, again, we talk about these all the time. A company needs to understand its purpose. So why it exists, its mission, you know, what it exists to do and its values. So who we are uh, and fa- other factors that are a part of our DNA that helps us make our decision. Uh, Vern Harnish uh, said, if the core values are the soul of the organization, the core purpose, or some call it mission, is to give it heart, right? So you need to understand your core, core focus in order to grow and to know where to allocate your time, energy, and resources. Uh, and then you also need to understand in what ways you are unique, right? How are you different from your competition? How do you need to emphasize that? So gaining some clarity about who you are 
you know, uh, how you're unique. This informs everything else, like your vision. It informs your marketing plan and, and, and those type of things you need to do. But ultimately, all of those things are go into forming who you are, your DNA. They go to help developing your culture. If, if these are truly a part of who you are, if they're truly clarified, if you are doing things like reinforcing your mission and vision and values and vision in your regularly scheduled meetings, we'll talk about, it becomes part of your culture. And uh, so knowing these things provides clarity in so many businesses. They may, they may have a statement in a book, but they, they really aren't living them out and it's not truly who they are. So, you know, who you are, why you exist, what you exist to do, um, your values, uh, and then understanding your core focus and your core distinctives or your, your unique value proposition are so key uh, to growing as a business, which then, you know, all goes to inform your kind of 10 year vision. What's your long-term vision, 10 or plus years? What do you want to have accomplished? And this could be financial. This could be, uh, you know, some other measures, but again, as we've talked about, that's a long-term vision and, and you obviously have to chunk down longer term visions into shorter term visions and the term uh, in the book traction, Gina Wickman talks about having three year goals and one year goals. Right. So if our 10 year goals to get here, what is the three year and one year goals that we need to do uh, or accomplish in order to get to that 10 year goals? Those then go to help us set our quarterly goals. If you've listened to this podcast for any length of time, you've heard me talk about the book, the 12 week year and quarterly review and planning of your goals because annual goals are longer are just too long uh, to get any feedback on the progress of your goals. There's often, uh, you know, just too much that happens within a year to accomplish annual goals without chunking those down into setting quarterly goals. Uh, in, in the EOS system, they talk about quarterly big rocks and establishing them for, you know, not only organization, but for each individual and then having the systems or what they call data, those scorecards of those, those key performance indicators, those key measurable items that will be reviewed, you know, weekly uh, that will help you evaluate where you are in the process of accomplishing those goals. So it's about having, you know, not only the goals, but then the follow-up systems, the meetings, the, the annual quarterly and weekly meetings that are specific in agenda, they're specific in purpose with specific people that all go to staying on course of this operating system. You know, those routines and processes that happen that help people carry out that vision and accomplish their purpose and mission, mission and vision. Uh, Gina Wickman uh, said in his book, clarify your vision and you will make better decisions about your people, processes, finances, strategy, and customers. So your vision, which is informed by your purpose, mission, and values, and your core focus is help clarify all those other things. And you do. That's another element of your uh, uh, your organization's operating system. What are the type of people and roles that we need in order to accomplish the who we are things and the vision? So that's called the people section in your uh, EOS or your, what we're calling the OOS here in, in this podcast. But uh, again, once you have all these elements laid out and your goals and your specific data to track, you de do need that meeting system, right? Things that are regularly scheduled uh, that aren't just thrown together on a whim. Your weekly meetings that specifically address these items, your, your progress, your scorecard, uh, and then tracking any issues that arise along the way, right? That's a part of the system, tracking the issues uh, that, get, that get in the way or need to be addressed in order to accomplish these goals and visions. And then again, the regular meetings, most people just, uh, you know, we don't know what to meet about and you certainly don't want to meet for no reason, but if you're accomplishing specific goals to go to a specific vision that, that deal with the DNA of your organization, that meeting is very purposeful. It's very specific and it's a, helping you as an operating system of your organization to accomplish those things you're setting out to accomplish. Um, Vern Harnish said goals without routines are wishes and routines without goals are aimless, right? So the most successful business leaders have a clear vision and the disciplines or routines to make it a reality, right? So these elements, and I've highlighted a lot of them quickly. That's why I've encouraged you to just go right now to Amazon or your favorite bookseller and snag a copy. Uh, they all come in an audible uh, audio book, uh, ebook, paper book. I'd, if you're going to get an audio book, I'd get both so that you can refer to it and dig into these books that have very specific outlines and plans to establish or clarify your 
organization's operating system. So take your business to a higher altitude by gaining clarity on your business and implementing your organizational operating system. Well, here's your fun fact for the day. We're going to go back to August 31st of 1958, where we saw the first flight of the North American A5 Vigilante. And as I read these, a lot of the data comes from Wikipedia, but I always encourage you to Google and look up the pictures because pictures always make it better. Uh, the Vigilante was introduced by the U.S. Navy during June of 1961, and it succeeded the Douglas A3 Sky Warrior as the Navy's premier nuclear strike aircraft. Uh, its service in this capacity was relatively brief due to the de-emphasizing of man bombers and the U.S. nuclear strategy. Uh, Wikipedia said that the North American A-5 Vigilante was an American carrier-based supersonic bomber designed and built by North American Aviation for the U.S. Navy. Prior to 1962 unification of Navy and Air Force designations, it was designated the A-3J Vigilante. Development of the A-5 started in 1954 as a private venture by North American, uh, who sought to produce a capable supersonic long-distance bomber as a successor to the North American XA-2J Super Savage. It was a large and complex aircraft that incorporated several innovative features, such as being the first bomber to feature a digital computer, while its ability to attain speeds of up to Mach 2, while carrying a nuclear strike payload, was also relatively ambitious for this era. Uh, era. Uh, The U.S. Navy saw the value of such a bomber, leading to a contract for its full development and production being issued uh, to the firm on August 29th of 1956. And so then the type performance, the first flight took place just over two years later on August 31st of 1958. And that's your aviation fun fact for today. Until next time, keep your wheels up and your attitude high. Thanks for listening to the Aviation Business Podcast. If you found this episode of value, please share with someone who could benefit from its content. You can stay up to date by subscribing in iTunes or your podcast player of choice. This episode is brought to you by Aris Insurance Solutions, your flight plan for navigating the turbulence in aviation insurance. To find out more, go to arisinsurance.com. That's A-E-R-I-S insurance.com.